Hello, I'm Caroline Weaver from Body and Soul Companion, and today we are going through the spiritual exercises of Ignatius of Loyola, week five, day three. And our subject is creation turning away from God. So day one, we looked at the fall of the angels, and you imagined yourself in a desolate place. And day two, we looked at Genesis 3 and the temptation and the fall of Adam and Eve. And also, one thing I didn't point out yesterday was um, God's mercy, even in the midst of that, that he covered their their shame and their nakedness, that an animal uh, died in order for them to have be covered with animal skins. So that's covering their nakedness, covering their shame. And that'll play out in the scarlet thread of redemption as we go into the life of Jesus. But today, we're going to look at a parable that Jesus told um, called the rich man and Lazarus. And we're going to do an imaginative contemplation. So you can imagine yourself as one of the disciples or um, someone in the crowd Um, I'll guide you through it. Um, Yeah, I'll guide you through it. And I have my tea here. These are my fall cups, my grandmother's cups from 1920s. But um, I just a reminder that this is about a relationship with God. So when you sit down um, with him, it's, it's, like just like you would with a friend you get a cup of coffee with a friend you're getting a I drink tea so I just that's my little symbol (laughs) for every morning I make chai tea with the Lord it's afternoon now but um and also I put my little candle here so it's electronic candle almost burned the house down last week um, with my candles while I was doing this. It's pretty funny. So with um, that said, let's close our eyes. And breathe slowly. Recentering our scattered senses on the presence of God. And take a breath in. And then take a longer breath out. And feel your body relax. That's how God made our bodies, just to take those breaths and really to cherish those breaths that he gives us. But it's pretty proven that the longer breath out, we relax. And with each breath out, just if there's any muscles in any part of your body that you're holding tension, let go and relax. Be still and know that he is God. And if there's lots going around in your head and you're having a trouble, if you're having trouble with your mind quieting down, I invite you to think about a person or situation that you're carrying. We carry burdens. And Jesus said, that he wants to care for us. He wants to lift our burdens because he he wants that easy yoke with us. So I invite you to imagine yourself giving that person or situation into the loving hands of Jesus and let him carry it so that your mind can be cleared to encounter him today.
And with that, receive his loving gaze at you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity is glad you're here. Lord, I pray that more of our day would be directed to your service and praise. And God, we seek the grace to feel saddened to see creation turn away from you when you continually extend mercy to your creation. So with that, I'll be reading Um, for the imaginative contemplation today. um, I'll be reading the passage first and then I'll guide you through. But you might want to be thinking about who you are in the scene. Jesus, someone in the crowd, one of the disciples. Jesus said, there was a certain rich man who was splendidly clothed in purple and fine linen, and who lived each day in luxury. At his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, who was covered with sores. As Lazarus lay there longing for scraps from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick his open sores. Finally, The poor man died and was carried by the angels to sit beside Abraham at the heavenly banquet. The rich man also died and was buried, and he went to the place of the dead. There, in torment, he saw Abraham in the far distance with Lazarus at his side. The rich man shouted, Father Abraham, have some pity! Send Lazarus over here to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I am in anguish in these flames. But Abraham said to him, Son, remember that during your lifetime you had everything you wanted and Lazarus had nothing. So now he is here being comforted and you are in anguish. And besides, There is a great chasm separating us. No one can cross over to you from here, and no one can cross over to us from there. Then the rich man said, Please, Father Abraham, at least send him to my father's home, for I have brothers, and I want him to warn them so that they don't end up in the place of torment. But Abraham said, Moses and the prophets have warned them. Your brothers can read what they wrote. The rich man replied, No, Father Abraham, but if someone is sent to them from the dead, then they will repent of their sins and turn to God. But Abraham said, If they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't be persuaded even if someone rises from the dead. So who are you in this scene? Are you one of the disciples? One of the Pharisees? One of the crowd? Perhaps someone who is just watching on So what are the surroundings like? Look around you. Where is Jesus telling this parable? Is he out in the open where others can hear? Or is he inside where it is a bit more private? Look around you. 
What do you notice? And what is the mood like of Jesus, of the disciples, of the Pharisees? the crowd? What's the mood? So imagine yourself in the scene. Look up at the sky. Look at the what's around you. If you're outside, look up at the sky. Look at the crowd. What are you wearing? What's the temperature? What do you hear? So as you listen to the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, Lazarus, what's going through your mind? If you're a Pharisee, what's going through your mind? That'd be interesting. Do you notice from the story that the poor man is given a name, but not the rich man? Also, you might know that his name means God has helped. Why do you think Jesus gave the poor man a name? And that name is God has helped. How does it make you feel that the rich man does not have a name? Where are you in society? In that society, are you on the rich man's side, Pharisee side, or are you you're more in a poor man's? What part of society extremes where are you on the continuum? And think about the poor man covered in sores, no rights, seemingly invisible. And the rich man self-centered in power and wealth. How does that make you feel? What is Jesus trying to say to you? So depending on where you are in society, how does it make you feel when you hear Jesus say that the rich man shouted, Father Abraham, have some pity. Send Lazarus over here to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I'm in anguish in these flames. How do you feel? How do you feel about the rich man? your attitude toward him.
And how do you feel when Abraham says, Son, remember that during your lifetime you had everything you wanted, and Lazarus had nothing. So now he is being comforted, and you are in anguish. And besides, there is a great chasm separating us. No one can cross over to you from here, and no one can cross over to us from there. How does it make you feel? Hearing about that great chasm. And then you hear the rich man. Jesus talk about the rich man. Please, Father Abraham, at least send him to my father's home. For my five brothers, I want him to warn them so that they don't end up in this place of torment. How do you feel? What's going through your mind as you hear Jesus say that? And when you hear Jesus say, Abraham replied, Moses and the prophets have warned them. Your brothers can read what they wrote. And the rich man, hearing Jesus say that the rich man said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone is sent to them from the dead, then they will repent of their sins and turn to God. Do you think that's true? When you hear that part of the parable, do you think the rich man has a good point? How do you react to him? And then Jesus finally says, Abraham, in the parable, if they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't be persuaded even if someone rises from the dead. What do you think Jesus means by that? Hmm. So wherever you are in that scene, look at Jesus. How do you respond to him? What kind kinds of questions do you have for him from that parable? You're right there. So have a conversation with Jesus. Jesus, what do you want us to know from what you said in this parable? And I'll give you a little bit of time to have a conversation with Jesus. Feel free to turn off the video if that's not enough time. But you might want to journal about what you learned from putting yourself in the scene, what, how you encountered Jesus. And here's a couple of questions for you. I'll make it personal. As if you're asking, when have I said no to God? And what were the results? So, I want you to think of a time in your life when you have said no to God. And what were the results?
And then when you have that memory, ask God what he wants you to know from it. And if that's not enough time, go ahead and turn off uh, the video and spend some time thinking about when a time was that you said no to God and just thinking about the results. And with that, uh, I wanted to read a quote by C.S. Lewis. There are two kinds of people in the end. Those who say to God, thy will be done, and those to whom God says, in the end, thy will be done. All that are in hell choose it, like thy will be done. Your will is being done because you said no to me. Without that self-choice, there could be no hell. No soul that seriously and constantly desires joy will ever miss it. Those who seek, find. To those who knock, it is opened. So you're here because you're a seeker. So you're saying yes to God just by being here. But there are times we've said no to God, and I think there's opportunities to, just like basically the rich man said no to God, And that's where he ended up. And there's also some things to be thought through about how we treat the poor and, and where we are in society. And that's something else to think about. But this was about encounter with Jesus. What does he want you, what does he want to impress upon your heart from that parable? And just that conversation, talk to me. Jesus about what you want me to learn from that. And then also asking God, from that time I said no to you, and these were the results, what do you want to impress upon my heart from that too? And the memory I just had was once there was a very, um, there was a man who was in a campground and he was just going crazy and and then later on I heard his daughter talking to her mother and she was an adult daughter and basically um, the daughter was encouraging you know why are you still with this man and, blah, 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 and because he was just making a fool of himself I think it was drunk and um, I prayed that if if God wanted me to give a word of encouragement to that wife, because you could tell she's really distressed when she was talking to her daughter. This is 1991. It's a long time ago. Um, and uh, I was a lot younger then. And I did ask that, and so I was in the bathroom the next morning, we're going to be leaving in a few minutes, and I said, God, if you want me to talk to this woman and give her a word of encouragement, then she'll walk in the door into the bathroom right now. And there was the wife of the man, the drunk man, and I just froze. <laughs> and basically I said no to God. I, it's something I asked for, and he gave it to me, and then I said no, I just was scared to say something just out of the blue. I thought she'd say, think I was weird. And so I asked God, what, you know, um, what he tr wanted me to know from that. And he reminded me of another time where I had done the same thing where I had prayed. Um, you know, you, when you're in public, you overhear a lot of things. And so basically God led me to 
do something. Um, I was, I don't want to interfere with people, but I just saw a, a mother being very verbally abusive to her daughter in an airport. And, um, and I, and I just asked God to give me an opportunity to talk to that woman because I had a um, verbal abuse growing up and, uh, and I just know I could just tell from that daughter what it was doing to her soul to have such verbal abuse from her mother in public of all places. And, and God just reminded me of that time where I did said something very gently, very gently. And it wasn't nosy and it wasn't intrusive. It wasn't like, you're not, da, 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 da. but just, God just gave me, um, it was a gentle word of encouragement. It really was. So anyway, he just reminded me of in 91, you did it, but then, but in 2001, about, I think it was about 2010 years later, I, I did say yes to God um, in that. So that was what God reminded me. So um, just talking to Jesus, have a conversation, get out some tea or coffee and um, go to another place, go for a walk with God and converse with him about that. Um, hell is a very hard subject to talk about. And I, um, I just, anyway, it's, it's just a hard subject. And, um, but that C.S. Lewis quote somehow gives me comfort. I don't know why. <laughs> so anyway, just be blessed. Um, I hope this imaginative contemplation make, made sense to you. We will do many more. As, especially as we get into the life of Jesus and narratives in the life of Jesus. And uh, be blessed. Bye.